Hi friends, good morning. Uh, hope uh, you have understood my previous video. So in this video, we will go through some new concept called Central Path. So just to uh, recap what has happened earlier. So we have seen how to create a process. Okay. So what are few data items? Uh, I think we have seen a number and a text, right? And then how to use it. And then next we have seen how to link them, link to different stages and then we have seen how to run a process, how to validate a process, something like that, right? So we will continue from there and then we will see how to use the variables in detail, like in more uh, the useful ways, okay? So step by step we will enhance our procedure. So today we will see something called circular path. So the basic principle of Blue Prism is to automate repetitive work and as such process will probably need to repeat some steps over and over again right so far we have looked at simplistic linear paths means it has started and where it came to end so but we will see something called circular path so the use of circular path is to avoid repetitive work that is the main intention here so if a series of steps which we are repeating so how we do that so we need to loop through some set of things so we'll see how we can create this circular path or a loop by the data items which we have seen earlier right so this is what it is there so let's so so we'll do it on blue prism the tool and then you you do the hands-on and so that you will completely understand what is the circular path and then how it is useful for us right so let's go to the tool and then explore how we can do that yeah so we are on a circle uh, so we are on the blue prism tool now right so with a start and end by default this is what we'll be getting by default so for to create a circular thing we need to understand what we have means we need to have two data items here which are numbers right so one is what is the loop start right where does the loop start or our loop counter right so i will keep something called a variable as loop counter right and the data item should be number and the initial value I'll keep it as zero, right? So this is our loop counter if you see, right? So this is our loop counter. So let me try to increase the size so that you will see in a much bigger way, right? So this is one more variable we want. So I'm just simply doing a copy paste, right? So what is the loop? It's not a loop counter. M loop max val means you want value otherwise I'll keep value and then the type is number and the initial value I'm keeping as 10 or 5 means what we are saying here is the intention of this data variable is I will use this variable and then I will loop through 5 times that is the intention here start starting from 5 so starting from 0 it should iterate for 5 times so these are the two input variables so let's see how we can create this so starting we should start with a calculation so when we are coming to a calculation we should understand I want to increment the counter right I want to just increment the counter so this is what I am doing here so the expression what is the expression we will do so here if we see loop counter is the value which I am if you see how I am doing can you do it right so I am just hovering on it and dragging the field into the expression and then leaving it so this is how you pull a variable into the expression section and then what is that we want to do we want to increment in plus one plus one something like that right so this is what i'm doing simple whatever the loop value is there i'm adding one to it so that is the expression so for every calculation as we have learned yesterday so there will be a result for every decision there will be a result but result we need not store actually blue prism will take it to take to the respective direction or path but for every calculation you should ensure that the result is stored in some variable if it is not stored it will give an um, the process validation when you are doing it will give an error for us so for now so we will say that the loop counter i am incrementing and i am again storing back to loop counter only hope you will understand this because the counter which is getting incremented the value should be stored again into the loop counter that is the intention here right 
and then I am closing this. So our calculation stage is ready. So decision we have to make now means, so what is the decision is counter um, or, or we will say that something like max value reached max value reached we are checking on this so what is the expression we need to have so we have to check whether the loop counter is greater than loop max value or not right so loop counter we are incrementing one by one and it is iterating and then it is saying whether we are exceeding the loop max value or not if it is yes the process will stop so so if you see here, this is a this is a decision box and the expression will have a result but no need for us to store the value so so i'm closing this now we need to link it now so i'm linking so starting is the process will start from start to counter it will increment the loop counter and then means loop value counter that is done and then it is going to a decision now if the decision is yes means the max value is reached what we want to do we want to stop the process no if we don't want to stop the process we need we want to again continue increment or something so we have to go back actually to we can actually we need to pull from decision box back to the counter but if you see here that will not look good actually if it is we are doing like this right i think you are able to see right so what i'm doing is i am pulling something called anchor so there is some stage or we can call it as a stage at this moment so we i have called just pulled one so these are nodes actually means the max value reach i am connecting to a node from node again i am connecting to another node and from that node i am connecting to counter plus plus stage so this node is just for direction and understanding purpose or beautification purpose it doesn't do any calculation or decision or any other stuff it is just to it is just to make the flow diagram visible very nicely and then it is it will be very clear for us so hope you are able to see now so i will just increment the size so that it will be easy for you right so hope you are able to see now so let me increment the size of this also i'm just adjusting for your convenience okay so this is how it is so it's up to us so hope you are able to understand so what is happening is process will come to the start it will go to the calculation stage in the calculation stage i am opening it again so what i am doing is i am taking a loop counter incrementing the value by one and then assigning it to the same counter so you might in real time you might be there may be a case where you are adding two values and the third the value or the result is stored in third value right so we can do that actually so the first value will come here instead of loop counter it will be like x plus y and then you will keep that value in instead of loop counter you will keep the value in z something like this okay so you have to understand the logic here so i'm removing the things again so just see what are the syntax how we can use how we can best make use of it so you have to understand that way right so hope you have understood this and then so count has done the increment now what is the next value done what we are doing is whether we are having a decision box checking whether the maximum value is reached or not how we are checking whether the loop counter is greater than loops max value or not if it is s yes, we are coming to a end if it is no we are asking to go back to the previous value so this will be a loop so once i run this means first i will save this and then what we should do so when i'm saying this it will ask for some summary it's better we you give a meaning thing thing so what i will do is once i when i'm saying i will try to keep some meaningful thing uh, what a circular path configured i'm just saving something save changes right so i'm doing a refresh also or reset also so what it does is if there are no errors means the process validation is complete i think we have learned this yesterday you should not forget when before running it you have to save the file and also you have to make a validation so think that there is no link here 
right I have deleted a link here if you see here right and I will what I will do is I will try to do a refresh if you see here right there is one error shown and then if I open it it will say there is a missing link so this clearly status if there are any basic syntax values are done syntax mistakes are done here this will be clearly shown in the process validation errors ok so I am saving it once again and then I am saving the changes as I told refresh and I will try to run I am making sure it, the speed is in normal or I will make it slow for your understanding ok so I am starting this so it came to counter loop counter value incremented to 1 if you can see on the variable now the maximum reach the condition is false it's going back now the loop counter value if you see here you can see right the counter is getting incremented you can see how the data item value is getting incremented so yesterday we did not see how we can pause it now I will see I've just clicked on pause button which is there on the control panel I clicked on pause if you see here the process got paused so we have seen two things yesterday one is process validation using the refresh button and seeing the errors and then to go button we have used for to running it and then we have something called pause button now we have used the pause if you see here the process is passed now if I click on this variable if you can see here initially we have set to 0 but the current value means the increment it is done is 3 now so it's in third iteration now you are getting me right so let's again continue the process of the every time the process which will be checking it is the current value if there is no current value it will take the initial value as current value you should understand that means when it is checking for the max value reached right if the the condition which we have kept right loop counter is greater than loop value so loop max value is fixed so there is no change but loop counter is nothing but the current value is taken into consideration here and then the expression is evaluated okay so if you see the loop max value if you see right we did not keep any current value at the beginning but it is taken as 5 because there is no operation done on the loop max value so the initial value is itself treated as current value by the blue prism tool right and again to resume it there is no resume button nothing but the go button so go button is to start and then to resume it again we have to press on go button only so I pressed it again condition happened ok it's still in the control so it again counter so it came to loop counter 5 so 5 is greater than 5 false so it go back again counter is making it 6 now now it is false so it is come out of the loop so if you see here when the loop value counter is 6 loop counter value is 6 which is greater than loop max value it came out the process stopped and you can see at the top it is completed stage so I will refresh this and what I will do is I will try to run in a faster way it will just jump in no time otherwise what I will do is for our convenience I will make it some 20 right so that you will see as it is moving faster you will understand what is happening right so I kept in a fast mode and then I did a refresh I did a save because I have done some variable changes now if you before running if you are opening it if you see right current values are empty so current values will be there when the process is in, in progress or the execution is happening so you should understand all this logistics so that you can configure or you can uh, keep the step by step procedure in such way you have to understand how the blue prism is pretending that's how you will, you will learn to provide solution for business process right I will run this in a faster way if you see this right it is just that it is something lights are running off on off on off you have seen right the loop counter is became 21 in no time so similarly we can automate this kind of things in much faster way so we have seen right so how we can do a circular path so I think you have got it the gist of how we can loop through multiple things and then make it useful for multiple uh, iteratable jobs right so we will next move on to something called control play actually we have seen this control play I have shown you on the tool how we can adjust the fast and speed so in the go next to go button we have something called a small drop down where you can increase the process speed actually right so it can be used for debugging actually when we are doing for the first time we will keep the thing at very slow mode and then once you are comfortable with the development you will keep it at normal mode when you want to iterate with multiple there are some thousands of iterations you have to make no need for you to see each and everything once everything is fine right so you will keep in faster mode 
So this controlling play which is there is using to debug the things and then once it is everything is fine you will run in fast mode because our intention is complete the job in the faster way or the best possible time. So that is where we have we are trying to automate the things right to get the things faster in the correct way. So so hope you have understood this. So keep learning and watch my next videos.